Good afternoon, everyone. It's Francis. It's 2.25 p.m. here in Houston. Cyprus, really, is where I'm at. But uh, I just made a report. 2005 YU-55, final countdown to the truth, Monday's report. Made by me today at 2.02 p.m. Here we go. Tuesday, 23.28 UTC time is when asteroid YU-55 will pass above the Earth on its way to close approach to the moon about 8 hours later on Wednesday, November 9th at 7.14 UTC. The asteroid will come as close as 326,467 kilometers or 202,857 miles to Earth and 244,845 kilometers or 152,140,000 miles to the moon. The passage of asteroid 2005 YU-55 is another opportunity to notch the pistol grip of amateur astronomers and researchers who answer the call of friends, some scrambling to find every last detail to reassure a nervous public that nothing's going to happen. The subject of NEO near-Earth objects has gone mainstream. Today's report comes from an unbiased observer, me, looking for his own personal truth. I've made my search public information. Don't expect too much and you won't be disappointed is my current mantra. I hope this report comes to you in good spirits and that you continue to actively participate in the search for your own answers. Why you 55? Why you 55? Why you 55? I got that asteroid jive. Wait, I haven't gotten over the rocky breakup with Kama Elenin. I'm glad that I started this discussion back in January with a handful of rocks. We're on number four now. Number five comes in January. Comet Levy 2006 T1 is scheduled for a close approach pass in January of 2012. Why you 55? Why you 55? We know you're a bee in a busy hive. You know, I have yet to discount anything. One thing, anything, I have not discounted anything from everything we have been looking at for the past year. This year I went from a bystander to a participant. This year you went from a stranger to a friend. As your friend, I promise to be who I am. And in that, you can at least know that I'm not making shit up to please you. Why you 55? I'm gonna still be alive, and so are you. My experience with why you 55 is this. Today, this morning, at 4.50 a.m., asteroid YU-55 was located at right ascension 15, 18, 26, and declination negative 14, 13, 11, and it was too low on the horizon for the telescopes to see. That is my latest physical positioning of the asteroid. That position is on normal course along the orbital path calculated by the IAU, International Astronomical Union, and supported by NASA at the JPL. While the orbit has changed slightly, over a year, the difference in orbits equates to about 200 miles since 2010. That means the orbit is not changing, and it did not change enough to bring the asteroid close enough to hit anything, even satellites. 2005 YU-55 orbit data from NASA is located at that location. 2005 YU-55 radar imaging plan from Goldstone Observatory is located at this location. My experience using the telescopes I use to image an object out in space tells me this. I'm going to use a red filter to block out the ambient moonlight. Here's a link to some different filters for telescopes. The asteroid is going to pass by the Earth on Tuesday evening at 6.28 p.m. in New York and then by the moon Wednesday morning at 2.14 a.m. There is going to be an opportunity to observe the asteroid that starts on sunset on Tuesday night and goes until the break of dawn on Wednesday in the United States. Anything before or after that, you will need some research-grade equipment to try and see it. After the sun sets, you will want to look for stars that pull your, your eyes into the area to look for the asteroid. Start by finding the stars Al Altair and Enif. Next, find the stars Markov and Sheet. Make a line past Altair, from Altair past Enif, and in between Markov and Sheet. That is the path that the asteroid will take toward the moon. I am looking at my stellarium and the date is set for tomorrow at 6.28 p.m. Altair is high in the sky to the southwest. Enif is a lower, little lower in the sky, almost at due south, and Markab and Sheet is a little lower in the sky to the southeast. That tells me that the asteroid is moving from southwest high in the sky to southeast just a little lower elevated in the sky. 
As these stars rise, it will appear that asteroid YU55 is heading to the spot it started. It will be moving slightly down as the stars are rising. If I wanted to try to take a picture of it passing, I would find Markov and Sheet, take multiple images over the entire evening, and see if you catch it going between these two stars in the early morning of Wednesday in the U.S. of A. When the asteroid passes the moon on Wednesday morning, it is just after the star Markov sets in the western horizon. The moon will also be about 15 degrees above the western horizon. All these bits of information should lead you to a way to take some images of the passage of YU-55. I hope it helps. The moon will be almost full as asteroid YU-55 passes. That will make seeing the asteroid by amateurs very hard. The asteroid is going to be close to 11 magnitude in brightness. Human eyes stop seeing things in the sky at 6 magnitude. The asteroid is almost twice as dim as our eyes can see. This means that without a telescope or a camera which can increase exposure, you won't be seeing this asteroid fly by. Anyone who tries to image the asteroid will need to be lucky. I cannot tell you how to take the images. For someone with a telescope that can track an object, I suggest checking back here tomorrow on Facebook. I plan on listing the exact coordinates of the asteroid as, at its closest approach to Earth and its closest approach to the moon. The weather outside of Houston where I live is cloudy with a big chance of rain Tuesday and Wednesday. That means the Cosmic Obsession Observatory will not be producing images that night. I will be using the Global Renoscope Network to image the asteroid that night and into the morning on Wednesday. I have a long list of observers who will be sharing their image results after the event. I will be making a video montage of the images that are shared with me as well. My future includes tracking of Comet Levy 2006 T1 as it makes its close approach in the beginning of January 2012. I will also begin a new research project on the planet Mars. I hope to have the help of my friends to bring some light to the hidden truths behind some of the geology of that planet. I will also begin a research project on the star Sirius. We are going to learn the importance of that star system and what, if anything, it can teach us. I am happy to have you as a friend. The recent comet and asteroid news is brought to you first by an amateur astronomer like me who take part in observing space and interacting with the scientists who make the confirmation reports and list the information publicly. It is because of these good works that we as the public can take part in the discovery of the universe around us. Do not let re fear rule you, but if you are fearful of an event, you should take the responsibility to know the truth when you see it. If you do not understand the first time, try again. There are many folks just like me who are trying to help. Ian Musgrave is one. T-Bar 1984 is one. Pete over at the Global Run and Scope Network is one. This ends the report. My name is Francis, your friendly amateur astronomer from outside of Houston, Texas. If you have any questions, contact me. Find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash fuzzy was here. Tonight, Monday, I'm going to do two radio interviews. One on the front, the front on Blog Talk Radio, and one with Bob Tuscan on the Intel Hub Radio Show. My interview with the front begins at 5 p.m. my time, so 6 p.m. East Coast time. And then my interview on the Intel Hub Radio begins at 8 p.m. East Coast time. Have a great afternoon. Bye.